For Blues players, their ankles are a critical part of their game, controlling nearly every motion on the ice. Players depend on their ankles to glide across the rink, stop on a dime, and fire off powerful shots. They're also one of the most vulnerable parts of the body, especially when it comes to injuries like high and low ankle sprains. As fans, we hear these terms a lot, but what do they really mean? And is one worse than the other? Our ankles have many roles. They provide stability and balance by flexing and rotating to keep the body upright against various forces. They allow movement to flex and extend the foot upward and downward, as well as rotation inward or outward. They allow weight-bearing support while walking, and they transfer power from the foot to the rest of the body during weight-bearing activities. Ankle sprains occur when there is excessive abnormal rotational force to the ankle ligaments, which occur quite often during athletic activity, after an athlete lands awkwardly from a jump, changes directions abruptly, or in hockey, when a skate edge catches the ice, causing the foot to twist. There are two types of ankle sprains. The so-called low ankle sprain is the most common. It occurs when the foot is forcibly turned inward or inverted. This causes a partial or complete rupture of the three ligaments stabilizing the outer side of the ankle. There are various grades of low ankle sprains, but they all cause pain, swelling, bruising, and tenderness in the outer part of the ankle. A so-called high ankle sprain occurs when the foot is excessively rotated externally or away from the body. This force damages the ligaments higher up the leg that connect the tibia, or shin bone, and the fibula, which is a smaller leg bone, hence the name high ankle sprain. These sprains are more often severe and affect the athlete's ability to bear weight and rotate at the ankle. The pain and swelling typically extends higher up the leg, depending upon the severity of the sprain. Now, both types of ankle sprains may take several weeks to heal based on the extent of ligament damage. Some high ankle sprains may actually require surgery to stabilize the bones of the lower leg. But with skates and all that padding, are hockey players somewhat protected from these injuries? A hockey skate is designed to stabilize the ankle and in doing so, limits the natural range of ankle motion. While this limitation helps prevent low ankle sprains, players can still be susceptible to high ankle sprains given the nature of the injury. While the rest of a player's body is well padded to absorb contact, their ankles are often vulnerable to injury when forced into unnatural movements during a hard body check or a hit against the boards, which can lead to injury. When you look at a guy like Colton Pareko, for example, the power of his slap shot relies heavily on his lower body, particularly his ankles. The power and torque generated when shooting comes from his ability to stabilize his body while flexing and rotating at the ankles, which transfers significant energy from the ice into the puck. This coordinated motion occurs in a fraction of a second. If his ankles aren't full strength due to injury, then it's much harder for him to generate the power and accuracy we're used to seeing. Our ankles don't just help us move. They are the foundation for our balance and the conduit for significant force transfer from the ground or ice to the rest of the body. When a Blues player passes the puck, takes a shot, or changes direction on a dime, they're relying on their ankles to stabilize their center of gravity on two skate plays as thin as a nickel. And he scores! What a play by Foxa! Injuries to this important joint can really disrupt a Blues player's performance and potentially his season. We treat ankle sprains by reducing pain and inflammation, re-establishing normal ankle range of motion, strengthening the muscles of the lower leg, and gradually resume athletic activity. So now that we know the significance of the ankle sprain hockey player and the difference between high and low ankle sprains, we have a new appreciation for this important joint and the tremendous burden they bear. And that's the science of St. Louis Blues hockey.